हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हैविंग लर्न द फर्स्ट फाइव पोएम्स इन पोएट्री सेक्शन इन द फर्स्ट टेक्स्ट बुक फ्लेमिंगो नाउ इट इज टर्न टू स्टार्ट द लास्ट पोएम ऑन जेनिफर टाइगर्स सो आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू सम सिनोप्सिस रिगार्डिंग दिस पोएम इन माय वॉइस ओरली फर्स्ट देन आई वुड लाइक टू राइट हियर सम इम्पोर्टेंट uh facts and important information related to this poem in written words also okay so before i start before i start writing the written facts regarding this poem i want to tell you here why has the poet written i want to tell you here why the poet i'm sorry why the poetess has written this the poem okay dear students aunt jennifer tigers aunt jennifer Jennifer the Tigers, written by Adrian Rich, an American poet, an American poet, is totally based on the is totally based on the on different two aspects. On different two aspects. Firstly, the poetess has the poetess has pointed out the constraints. or the difficulties or the problems or the challenges being faced by the women modern day women everywhere in the world in the male dominating societies in the male dominating societies and the second one is here she also demands she also opens her voice calling for the rights human rights for the safety and for the protection and for the Uh, upliftment okay for the upliftment for the empowerment of all the women in the world women community so that they can also lead their lives quite respectfully and quite uh, quite respectfully and with much dignity gracefully okay in their married life so now i would like to write here some interesting facts but while writing this the poem while writing this the poem the poetess is also kept one thing in her mind okay that she has she has described it very clearly how a woman how a woman namely the poetess has chosen a name aunt jennifer okay so how a woman namely aunt jennifer Uh, finds herself completely changed in her married life soon after her marriage before her marriage she used to pass her time quite independently okay at full freedom at full liberty but after getting herself married she finds herself she gets she finds herself badly tensed and worried she gets herself uh, uh, totally stressed and she can't do anything at her will because in the male dominating society it is often seen that the males always keep themselves dominated over the okay dominated on the females okay and they don't allow them they don't allow them they don't give them permission to open their voices and to use their human rights the same situation the same situation is noticed in the life of aunt jennifer okay who is really a very skillful lady who is really very skillful lady but she can't open her voice before her husband so she uh, since she is an artist uh, she is a top class artist and she wants to open her uh, voice she wants to express uh, the feelings of her uh, Uh, heart the feelings of her heart which she has concealed for a long time okay through her embroidery through her embroidery or you may say the needle work okay by uh, sketching or by painting or by making drawing the beautiful pictures of the tigers which look like the real tigers okay in their uh, color in their shape and in their uh, all activities so here are the, here are total three stanzas okay so in these three stanzas the poetess has described all the important things rela related to the problems and the uh, uh, related to the problems and the difficulties as faced by her main character aunt jennifer aunt jennifer in her married life so now i would like to okay 
teach you i would like to teach you first the i would like to teach you first the poem and then the same some words will be written to you okay dear students before we start reading this the poem we have to go through this three, two questions the question number first is here what does the title of the poem suggest to you it is asked to all of us regarding the title of the poet whether we know the meaning of this title or don't know and the second question is here are you reminded of other poems on tigers the poet also asks us whether we have some idea of learning the poem any other poems or the poem written on tigers on the life of the tigers in the previous examinations or not so these the two question will be answered later first of all we have to read the three stanzas okay dear students before we start reading the three stanzas i would like to uh, give you uh, i would like to ask you to know the meanings of these two important words so the first word is a denizen the word denizen stands for a person or an animal or a plant that lives grows or is often found in a particular place okay in other sense you may call it resident inhabitant and the word sleek stands for elegant elegant okay the first four lines aunt jennifer the tigers prance across a screen bright top of denizens of a world of green they don't fear the man beneath the tree they pace in sleek silveric certainty aunt jennifer the tiger prance across a screen bright top of denizens of a world of green they don't fear the man beneath the tree they pace in sleek silveric certainty Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull the may she wait of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull the may she wait of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand when aunt is dead the last stanza When aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie still ringed with ordeal she was mastered by the tiger in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and afraid when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie still ringed with ordeal she was mastered by the tiger in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and afraid so now you can see the rhyming scheme in this poem is set by the poet andre and rich what is the rhyming scheme dear students can you just notice it here in the first line the last word is a screen and the second word is a green and the third in the third line the last word is a tree and the last word is a certainty so here the rhyming schemes which is set by the poetess here in these four lines or in her poem also is a a b b a a a a b b a a b b a a b b okay so now the rhyming scheme is here a a b b a a b b a a b b okay so now let's start getting the explanation of this first stanza aunt jennifer the tigers prance across a screen the tigers drafted by the tigers painted by the tigers sketched by the woman namely aunt jennifer the woman namely aunt jennifer by her skilled hands by her skilled hands with a needle work with a needle work look jumping out of the screen jumping out of the piece of cloth jumping out of the screen the word screen stands for a piece of cloth that is set between any two frames okay to make any drawing there to sketch any drawing there bright topaz denizens of a world of green so these the tigers are also described as the bright topaz they are compared to the bright topaz the word topaz stands for here a very precious shining stone a very precious shining stone okay looking in which look in which looks in uh, golden color golden color bright topaz denizens the word denizen stands for here the citizens or the denizen stands for the residents of a world of green stands for here green forest 
so these the tigers the tigers as sketched by the tigers as sketched by drafted by aunt jennifer on a panel board on a screen on a piece of cloth canvas cloth look as if they were look as if they were jumping out of the screen in other words they look so active they look so active energetic okay they look like the same tigers they look like the real tigers they look like the real tigers which are the residents of a green forest of a green forest because you know it very well that the abode abode means residents the residents of the uh, real tigers is in the green forests so now one can hardly find any difference between these two kinds of tigers the tigers as drafted by sketched by aunt jennifer and the tiger as we can see here in the forest life in the forest they don't fear the man beneath the tree the tigers as sketched by as sketched by okay aunt jennifer have no fear have no fear okay in their minds in their heart while standing beneath the tree okay they don't they don't fear they don't fear to see the man they don't fear to the uh, to see the man approaching them okay while standing while standing or sitting beneath the tree they are totally unafraid of everything they are totally unafraid of everything each and everything so it seems here that the poetess that the poetess has described her one thing has described the inner feeling of the of her main character of her protagonist of her central character main hero of this poem aunt jennifer aunt jennifer who cannot or you may say in the past who could not open her eyes before her husband because her husband always tortured her exploited her and had given her no right to speak any word against anything so now she opens her eyes she opens her eyes okay uh, she opens her eyes through the embroidery through through her embroidery of the beautiful uh, pictures of the uh, tigers okay they they pace here we find also difference between the two things first the tigers represent here the independence freedom and uh, sense of courage and bravery and on the other hand the um, lady the woman aunt jennifer uh, spends her time in uh, cowardice okay and she is uh, she remains totally uh, weak and uh, frail woman in her married life they pace in sleek chivalric certainty they pace pace tense for here move from one place to another place one direction another direction okay gracefully they pace in sleek sleek tense for here as you have read here elegant elegant mean gracious chivalric tense for here in a very gracious gait in a very splendor splendid gait g a t gait chivalric in other sense also stands for here also stands for here courtesy shown by some person shown by shown by uh, some animal to the woman to the females so here the word civilic represents here the represents here the uh, independence independent independent uh, gait okay or independency of independency of a powerful knight k n i g s t so knightly you may also see here k n i g s t l o n knightly sense of knightly okay certainty stands for here confident okay so they pace in sleek chivalric certainty when these the tigers when these the tigers move from one place to another so they seem to have much confident of themselves they seem to much confident of themselves and looking at their gait g a i t gait okay manner of walking looking at their gait one can say that they don't have any kind of fear in their mind they are totally independent okay they walk with gracious uh, they walk in gracious form and they walk graciously okay they look so nice in their walk and in their all activities so in the first four lines it is told to us that it is told to us that aunt jennifer aunt jennifer who has become the victim of the oppression 
caused by her husband cruel husband in the male dominating society expresses her voice and the feelings of her in uh, inner feelings of her heart or feelings of her inner heart in the part of her heart through the embroidery of the beautiful tigers okay aunt jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool so this is the first line represents here the time or the situation soon after the marriage of aunt jennifer when aunt jennifer gets married okay she finds herself in a very stress and uh, strain uh, stress and strain form and she is badly stressed by her husband she is not allowed to do any task very quite independently so she uh, has become so old and weak that she can't uh, she can't pull the needle okay through the bundle of the wool very easily find even the ivory needle hard to pull it becomes so impossible for her that she can't be able to pull the needle ivory needle from the bundle of the wool the needle which she used to pull very comfortably easily in the days of her uh, in the days of her prosperity in before her marriage um, before her marriage and now because she has been tortured and she has she is being exploited every day so she becomes uh, so much weak uh, mentally and physically weak and uh, stressed okay the weak and thin okay i am sorry not stressed the massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hand the massive weight of uncle's wedding band stands for here the overall burden of her marriage the overall burden of her marriage or you may say here the problems caused by her marriage okay okay are quite visible on the hand of aunt jennifer there is no other if there is no other effect on the body of aunt jennifer but her hand has totally been her hand has been totally defend totally wounded and totally affected by the growing pressure of her husband on her okay i would also like to give you some translation in hindi also but first of all i am to explain it in english so here the last two lines represent here the oppression or the exploitation which is faced by aunt jennifer soon after her marriage in her home caused by her husband who is who is mentioned here as uncle here in this line okay and of the overall effect of the oppression of the threats of the humiliation okay uh, appears on her hand because she can't be able to pull anything very comfortably because of that unwanted and unexpected uh, burden of her life when aunt is dead the poetess in the last stanza the poet tells us that when aunt jennifer meets her death meets her death her terrified hands will lie so it is quite sure uh, it is quite certain that when a person dies so she or he, he or she okay is burnt uh, or is buried with her whole body organs so uh, similarly her terrified hands the hands which were totally terrified okay which are totally terrified which have been terrified for a long time by rashman will also will also get will also get uh, burnt at the time of her cremation but still ringed with ordeals the hands which are still which are still uh, which still appear to be connected with the same difficulties okay ring stands for encircled ring st- just like a ring which encircles the finger so similarly the life of the the life of the lady aunt jennifer had also been encircled by different kinds of difficulties she was mastered by so the hands which had been skilled which had been fully skilled okay had still had still all those difficulties which the uh, lady had faced in the caused in the presence of her husband in her home okay so now so now i would like to tell you here the meanings of the last two lines the tiger in the panel that she made but on the other hand the poetess also uh, mentions it very clearly that uh, though the aunt jennifer when the aunt jennifer would meet her death her uh, she would be burnt she would be buried okay with her terrified hands okay in the burial place and uh, the hands which had been skilled and mastered by okay uh, different kinds of uh, she was mastered by the hands which had been fully skilled and then again her hands had been uh, totally tortured and uh, her hand her hands had been given so much problem by resmen would uh, also uh, 
would also be laid down with her with her uh, entire body there at the time of cremation but the tiger in the panel but the tiger which she made with a skilled hand okay will go on prancing proud and unafraid will definitely represent it continuously will keep will keep uh, moving from one place to another place will keep showing the um, importance of freedom for a person and they will also represent it uh, that uh, the um, they will also represent it that uh, they are much proud of themselves and they are totally unafraid because they are packed with they are filled with uh, the extreme uh, courage and bravery and through these tigers the poet has described here the um, painful feelings of her mind okay which she could not express before her husband due to the uh, dominance of the males in our society okay so here in this th three stanzas i would like to give you the written uh, written um, statement written explanation also regarding each and every stanza and all the um, other all other things which we have, have read here in this poem beta is kavita mein aunt jennifer naam ki koi ek mahila hoti hai jis mahila ko uske apne shaadi ke baad mein kafi kuch pareshaniyon ka samna karna padta hai aur woh mahila jab apni shaadi ke baad mein bahut sari pareshaniyon ka samna karti hai to us mahila ko जो है ना अपनी आवाज़ खोलने का मौका अपनी आवाज़ बोलने का मौका नहीं दिया जाता है और वह फिर अपने उस बंधन को अपने उस शोषण को अपनी आवाज़ से तो नहीं बता पाती लेकिन अपने निडल वर्ग के माध्यम से ठीक है जिस प्रकार से उनका एक गोला होता है उस उनके गोले में से उनको अपने उसमें बन पिक्चर तस्वीर बनाते हुए एम्ब्रॉयडरी करते हुए ओके एम्ब्रॉयडरी मीन्स एन इडरवर्क होता है जिसको हम कहते हैं कि भाई कोई कढ़ाई वगैरह करना किसी भी तो कढ़ाई कर कर के उसने बाघों के चित्र इस प्रकार से बनाए हैं कि ताकि वो बाघों के चित्र मेल डोमिनेटिक सोसाइटी के लोगों को दर्शा सकें कि देखो किस प्रकार से स्वतंत्रता जो होती है वो कितना ज़्यादा किसी व्यक्ति के लिए महत्व रखती है और ये जो मेरे चित्र हैं भले तुमने मेरे को परेशान किया लेकिन मैंने ये सभी महिलाओं को ये दर्शा दिया है कि आप सभी अपने समाज में अपने घर में बड़ी स्वतंत्रता के साथ जीवन जिए कभी किसी का शोषण ना सहें क्योंकि उसने अपनी दबी हुई भावनाओं को अपने बागों के चित्रों के माध्यम से प्रदर्शित किया है बाकी इसमें जो कुछ भी पढ़ने को मिला है वो सब चीज़ें आपको समझा दी गई हैं एक एक पॉइंट क्लियर कर दिए गए बाकी एक्सप्लेनेशन सब क्लियर हो जाएगा ठीक है तो मैं अभी नेक्स्ट लेक्चर में इसके बारे में आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू द एक्सप्लेनेशन क्रिटिकल एक्सप्लेनेशन ओके इंटरप्रिटेशन एंड द एप्रिशिएशन एंड एनालिसिस ऑफ दिस पोएम ओके सो दैट यू कैन बी एबल टू रीड ईच एंड एवरीथिंग वेरी नाइसली थैंक